Hello YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here, and today we're going to be changing out the catalytic converters. A couple of preparatory things, you want to get your vehicle jacked up, in this case I'm using the ramps in the front, and I'm going to probably put a jack on one side in the back just to give me a little more clearance. I'm not as petite as I once was. Second, you want to make sure that everything's cool to the touch. In my case, I drove this up on the ramps. I've let it cool for well over an hour, so I'm going to get under there and make sure everything's cool because exhaust system catalytic converters get very hot and can burn you. Next, you're going to want to find the bolts that are holding the cap pipe to your exhaust manifold. And you're probably going to want to go ahead and get a little bit of penetrating oil on those bolts and nuts because as you see the exhaust manifolds on these cars typically rust and it's very possible that the bolts holding that together down there may have rust welded themselves. I'm going to use an impact wrench. You can do this with hand tools obviously but impact wrench is going to make it a lot quicker and easier. For the driver's side, you want to disconnect the rear O2 sensor, then unbolt from the front. There's just two nuts that are holding it on. The air impact wrench makes it super easy. <laughs> if you use hand tools, just know you're going to be turning for quite a while. You don't have to hold the bolt side. In other words, it's welded on, so just turn the nut and it will come loose. The front nuts were 15 millimeter. The bolts that hold on the rear appear to be 9 sixteenths. They don't appear to be metric. Now mine were a little bit rusty. That they may have started as 14 millimeter, but the 9 sixteenths fits it snug, and the 14's too small, and the 15's way too big. So I'm gonna hit this with the impact, and you need to support this to keep it from falling on you because. Once these come out, there's nothing holding it in the car. The upstream O2 sensor on the driver's side is actually connected to the exhaust manifold, so it's easier to take that off once you've removed this pipe. That's all the hardware that holds it on. Two nuts, two bolts. New, old. Hopefully you can see the new one is nice and clean and this one is very dark brown. You can certainly rent a uh, tool to get your O2 sensors off, but if you have one of these wrenches with the open end, Get right over the O2 sensor. So if you were gonna do this on vehicle, it should be a 7 8 so it might be a 22 millimeter. It's, it's probably probably the millimeter size, but uh, this will definitely work. But like I said, it's a lot easier to do this off the vehicle. The only one that you have to do on the vehicle is the front one on the driver's side because it's attached to the exhaust manifold. So I'm going to go get that one now. So you can see with the pipe off, it's much easier to get to the O2 sensor. It's right there. And also easier to disconnect the electrical. It's right there. You may need a screwdriver to get in there, or you might be able to do it with your fingers. So while I had this all opened up, I went ahead and sprayed some dry molly lube on the steering shaft. Hopefully that will extend its life. I know this is a weak link in the Crown Vic. Okay, the upstream on the driver's side is the 15717. The downstream on the driver's side is the 15718. And you can visually confirm that by looking at the cord links. So you see there. 
basically identical. There's the, see how blackened the one that came off of the car compared to the new one. I do recommend putting some anti-seize on the threads. I'm sure it's going to create some controversy in the comments, but uh, it's definitely going to make it easier to remove should you need to change them later on. Just don't get the anti-seize up on this part. Just make sure it's only on the threads. And I'm going to go look up the torque setting, although uh, because you can't really get a torque wrench on these, you're probably just going to have to hand tighten it pretty snug. So when I pulled the cap off of here, it already had the anti-seize on it. So that tells me that I'm right, that you do need anti-seize on these threads. So I'm going to go thread this one on. I have this sealed with a 10 millimeter Allen. new O2 sensor and start it by hand. You want to make sure that it's threading easily without resistance. You don't cross thread. So with this snugged up, this is ready to go back on the car. I need to remove the old rear gasket and put a new one on. <clears throat> and just fit this into place and hand tighten the nuts to hold this on so it doesn't fall on my face and then I'll go look up the torque settings on these and torque them all down So like every DIY project, the first side always takes a little bit longer than the second one. So, and of course when you're filming it, it takes even longer. So I'm ready to put this one back in and then I'll be done. And you see there's your starter if you needed to replace it or do anything with it. That green connector is the front O2 sensor connector. And that blue one there is the rear O2 sensor connector. So because it's really not easy to film and do this, I'm just gonna explain what to do and then just do it. So probably need to slide the catalytic converter pipe in here, connect the O2 sensor wires, without letting it hang from them obviously so you're gonna have to hold it with one hand and once you get those connected then fit it up over there and put one nut on it so that it doesn't fall on your face once you've got that then you can wiggle in the back get the gasket on the back and from what I can tell everything torques to 30 foot-pounds on these four bolts the two on the front and the two on the rear if that's wrong, I will uh, post, you know, on the screen here what the correct one is. Or if someone else in internet land knows of a different torque setting, let us know. 